Benjamin Netanyahu himself has described this as the second phase since the uh, war started, restarted rather, after those October 7th events. Uh, wh what exactly is Israel's strategy here in terms of its military offensive into Gaza as it stands? Well, they don't tell us exactly what their strategy is. What we can see with our own eyes is that it's not a massive um, ground offensive covering the whole of Gaza. It's limited to the northern half of the Gaza Strip uh, and it is an escalation, but it's not the full firepower that Israel has lined up at the Gaza border. So uh, tanks go in, infantry goes in, APCs go in, and they go quite slowly and they go forward slowly. And what they are searching for, of course, is um, the, Hamas, um, the Hamas militants in the tunnels underneath the strip where they are at the moment. And they have reported today that a certain number, they didn't say how many, they said dozens of um, the Hamas militants were killed in combat when they emerged from the tunnels. And perhaps that, that I could say to you is part of the strategy, in addition to the bom aerial bombardments, which we have been watching, I think, since day two or three, or since, when, since Israel began to respond um, now 22 days ago, to the attack now 22 days ago. I think I'd like to also talk about the humanitarian situation, because we have heard from Israel's Defence Force spokesman, that spokesperson, that two things are changing. One is they're um, turning on, a re it's starting again a pipe, a water pipe, so turning the water back on to the south of the Gaza Strip while they're still calling on civilians in the north of the Gaza Strip to move south, uh, and that they are planning also to reintroduce or to agree to the um, humanitarian aid convoys coming in at something like 100 trucks a day. And it's being reported here that that is the suggestion or the influence of Washington, because once again, there was a conversation between US President Joe Biden and Israel's Prime Minister. I think it's also significant that the chief prosecutor for the ICC, the International Criminal Court, was on the border of Gaza today at the Rafah border crossing. And he said, uh, described it as a tragic time, said he could only see Gaza, he couldn't get in. But he did remind everyone, I think, that there are complaints that he is investigating about events in Israel, uh, alleged war crimes, and and um, about crimes committed by Israel. And I think it's very pointed that he was at the Rafah border crossing today. And he does say, of course, impeding relief supplies to Gaza's population may constitute war crimes under the International Criminal Court. That is a development that we will keep our eye on. But now, obviously, with all these humanitarian problems, resource issues on the ground in Gaza, there is one thing which has remained constant despite everything. That's rockets coming from Hamas. That's right. I mean, that, that is it's, it's definitely worth commenting on because there's rocket fire into Israel, including up to Tel Aviv, so quite far from the border uh, every day, numerous times a day. So the one thing that does seem to be functioning still is Hamas with its network of tunnels under the ground. There was an interview given to the New York Times uh, in which a Lebanese official was quoted as saying that they have there enough, you know, hundreds of thousands of litres of fuel, enough to generate electricity for them, enough to power their rockets, which are all fuel powered, uh, food, medicine, everything they will need to function and to build more rockets for three to four months. I think he was saying that as a warning to Israel to think, clear, to think carefully about what it's getting into. But it also raises the question of what's, what is the relationship between Hamas and the civilians in Gaza? Because the people who are being, who are being protected from the Israeli bombing is the Hamas militants. It's not the people going underground to take cover. So there is that suggestion that Israel has frequently made that Hamas is using the humans the, the Gazan civilians as human shields. And there is, you can see a, pro, a procedure here whereby it's protecting its, itself. And I just want to say there was an interview with Khaled Mashal, who is <clears throat> a Hamas politician who lives um, outside of Gaza. <clears throat> it was on Saudi television. And he was asked about this, you know, did you consult the people of Gaza before you launched that October the 7th attack in Israel, knowing that it was going to bring retribution upon them? And he said they're prepared to suffer because we are achieving the goal of conquering 
Israel, defeating Israel. That's the point of resistance. You know, that's all very well for him to say. He's living in Doha, in Qatar, in Doha, in some luxury. And the people of Gaza who are not consulted are the ones paying the price. So lots of